tonight, the city of Lagos points at the dark as our roots. Be the first to know from the north, south, east, west and around Africa. We break the news. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news breaks. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV. A 24 hour news station. Ashes were the remains of the best rapid transits, popularly known as BRT buses, set ablaze by angry soldiers on the verge of avenging the deaths of their colleagues. Attempts to get the views of eyewitnesses at the scene proved a little difficult, but some who agreed to speak had this to say. It's those army people that come to do it. When they, are, when they are asking about the BRT man, and they got that the man has run away. That was right, they have to stop those BRT bus and start burning them. There was issue of an army officer that was knocked down by BRT boss, and as a result of that, they started uh, reacting to that issue. I believe they should be proactive. You know, this is a nation where law exists. So if they have done something like that, government will have stepped into it and know why and what causes it. But the truth is that if individual have obeyed the law, such incident wouldn't have happened. From what seemed like a mini war on BRT operators by military officers, the far-reaching effect told on many Nigerians who were conveyed in half-destroyed buses while others took to trekking in the absence of operations by BRT drivers. On the issue, Governor of Lagos State, Babatunde Raji Fashola, say he is yet to receive a formal report on all that transpired between the military men and BRT operators. But if the allegations prove true, then it would be an irresponsible conduct for the military officers to take laws into their hands. If bosses that citizens are saying are not enough are being set ablaze, I don't know how setting ablaze bosses recompenses any injury in any event that you, you, you may have suffered. I don't know how damaging public property is restitution for any injury that may have come. But for now, uh, the only thing I can say to you is that when I get the full facts, I will address you and let you know what has happened and what we intend to do and how we intend to go about it. Following the incidents, many Nigerians could not help but wonder the level of lawlessness in the country while lamenting the waste of taxpayers' money in a show of anger. Omotayo Alo, Core TV News, Lagos. It was another tra uh, tragic day at the Kurodu Road yesterday where it was reported that about five BRT buses were burnt after one of the BRT buses hit um, a soldier at um, somewhere around, uh, um, I think, Onikban. Uh, Bangroof Onikban exists yesterday. And of course, it caused a lot of traffic that lasted for hours. And there have been a lot of controversy rocking that. Of course, we just listened to Lagos State Governor uh, saying that um, that act, you know, was really not expected from the Nigerian soldiers. But um, good to know that um, Nifemi Oguntoye, still with me in the studio, was at the scene. Nifemi, um, good to have you on the second half of the show. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, quickly, you were at the scene of the, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, I wouldn't say event, of the, the whole thing yesterday. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the atmosphere? Well, you know, earlier you established that the relationship that exists between Nigerian citizens and soldiers is more of um, fear than respect. Our crew was there three times yesterday. The first time, we couldn't even get, you know, beyond 15, 20 meters to the actual spot where that incident happened because the men of the Nigerian military were on ground and you know what happens when Nigerian sea soldiers you know were kept far away the whole a whole side of the road you know was blocked for several hour, I mean, hours and we had to go back the next time we got there the military men were still there but you know the traffic was already going gradually and even my crew member could not come out of the vehicle we had to you know shoot the scenes from the vehicle from inside the vehicle and that talks about the fear that exist pre-exist in the mind of nigerians when you talk about nigerian soldiers they say if a military man slaps you then you know that the policeman is your friend you know there's a all 
a grave fear but then, <laughs> you know, you, you, that as, exists within as, Budapest. As journalists, one mm. would expect that um, you guys should have been uh, given free passage to really see what happens and then give it good coverage and then have something to report. Well, that was not the case. Well, we must establish in a way that if everything we discuss here are still alleged, just like uh, uh, Mr. Governor said that he's still awaiting official reports from the military, the BRT, uh, uh, you know, officials and other stakeholders. But it was alleged that journalists and curious residents who attempted to take photographs, you know, or make recordings at the scene were not spared. Their phones were collected, some were malhandled, some were injured, some were beaten to pop. As a matter of fact, the phone of a particular policeman was collected. Even policemen were not allowed, you know, at that scene. All they could do was just stand and watch. And you get to that, so we went back there a third time. You know, at this particular time, the vehicle was cleared. And, you know, what you have was just the scene showing the burnt, you know, uh, uh, BRT park. And I wish we can have that display on screen now. And you know what it reminds you is what you see on the front page of the newspapers when they talk about a bomb blast in northern Nigeria. And you begin to wonder how did we get to this point where BRT buses are burnt? You heard the governor say these are buses that are not even enough, that Lagosians are complaining we need more buses, and then it's been burnt there. The alleged story was that a soldier man was knocked down by a BRT vehicle and you know from the n normal thing a BRT vehicle does not take another uh, path except from the BRT line and then the driver of that BRT man came out of the vehicle and ran away you know there were efforts by the men of the military to you know arrest him or something but so let me know was it confirmed that um the soldier was hit right at the BRT lane. The story, the stories are sketchy because the BRT officials, according to this paper, I think it's in my driven punch, is saying that um, the BRT did not knock the military guy down, that the guy was on a bike and rammed into a stationary BRT. But that's a different story from what the men of the military is saying. They are saying that um, the BRT man knocked down, you know, the soldier who was on a motorcycle. So the man ran into a particular estate and the security officials of that estate were also allegedly injured and beaten by men of the Nigerian army. But you know, one thing that really, really surprised me was even after, several hours after the incident, when we got to the cinema and were trying to you know, get people's opinion, eyewitnesses, you know, account, people were scared. There was, a particular filling station directly opposite that was standing opposite you know that particular BRT park that was burnt and we were there and, and people were telling you I wasn't there I don't know what happened I mean we're talking about Nigerian military people were actually running away from the cameras and say oh, I don't know this is where I make my money every day I can tell you what happened I wasn't there you can go ahead and speak to some of the people and it's it, it's it's so scary when such things happen uh, when um, a spokesman for the army formation in Yaba, Lagos, um, Oge, was rich. He spoke to a radio station in Lagos yesterday and admitted that soldiers from the unit were aggrieved and that the man who was knocked down was allowed to die because no one took the initiative to rush him to hospital. He said a soldier, I'm quoting him now, who was passing through the bus stop saw the soldier and called the office because he could recognize him. By the time we got there, we realized that our colleague was inside the bus already dead. Now, they said it was a BRT bus that knocked him down. He was riding a licensed motorcycle, so why was he not taken to the hospital until he died? Of course, our men were angry, and we decided no BRT bus would be allowed to pass through the road. We did not stop others. Now, he also denied that the soldiers burnt the buses, accusing miscreants of perpetrating the act. He went ahead to say when things like this happen, you hear different versions and, but I can tell you the soldiers did not burn the buses. It is possible that some area boys carried out the act. No one was harassed by soldiers. We only stopped some people who were taking pictures and, you know, wanting to film the area. And one would question, what is the fault in civilian journalism? Mm -hmm. What is the fault in journalists going to a crime scene you know, and getting on-the-spot information, 
I mean, this is democracy. This is democracy. And it's really surprising if journalists could be um, bad from, you know, going to the scene. But also, let's just look at, um, you know, it has been alleged that mm. um, uniformed men, not just army, not just soldiers, and um, not just um, police people, yeah. uh, even um, for, for, for some security group, uh, once you're on uniform, you don't obey the rule of law. Mm. Uh, do you think that might just, um, uh, you know, it, it had a, a, a hand in what happened yesterday? Yes. Um, well, uh, unfortunately so. It does happen. I, I was in Edo State a couple of months, um, you know, earlier, and there was a time that the use of motorcycles were banned in major metropolis in that state, in, you know, about three major local governments. And what you see is policemen and men in uniform flouting this law. And you, you, if you approach them, not many of them can show you the permit, you know, of using such you, we have a situation whereby the moment you are in the uniform, of course you carry an authority, and we must not, you know, forget about that in the jiffy. But then, they say power is nothing without control. What makes you a man of authority is that you are subject to authority, and at every particular point in time, your life is regimented. That, that reminded me of what happened on NYC camp. It's a 21-day exercise of training young Nigerian graduates in paramilitary forms is a regimented life. Discipline is the core value of the Nigerian military. I mean, there's a time you wake up, there's a clothes you wear, you don't even keep your beard so bushy. It's a question, it is, it is a profession of moderacy. It's a profession of, you know, discipline. And so when you have a situation whereby soldiers are alleged to have caused such trouble in Lagos Metropolis, it is, a serious cause of concern. A very serious cause of concern, and of course, some of the concerns have grown so big. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, for me, of course, I know you have a lot of things to, you know, uh, uh, build but let's, let's quickly look at uh, the fact that, um, just like um, the, the, the spokesperson that spoke to the registration said that um, the military guy was on the ground for hours mm -hmm. or minutes, mm -hmm. and then um, no, no one rushed him to the hospital, you know, I think um, it's becoming becoming in Lagos mm. because you see when someone have an accident, the first thing the, the communists want to do is to snap picture, be the first to upload on their DPs mm. and put on Facebook and write a lot of things and, you know, you know, get the credit for being the first to post such things. Mm. But we, we've also seen situations where, you know, when um, someone is, uh, had an accident and then an innocent person takes the person to the hospital, the person <laughs> gets detained. Mm. 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 Don't you think this is a big worry? Well, everything boils down to, you know, a life of truth. If you ask uniform men, they will tell you that you can't be arrested for taking someone to the hospital. But on the contrary, that's what happens. You get there, they ask you to write a statement. Where did you get him from? Of course, most times you are detained. And they ask you to, to even drop some huge amount of deposition. Allegedly. But then, you know, I think this is what our community has unfortunately detail rated to. It, it, it used to be a community of all for one and one for all. It used to be a community where every child is trained up by the community, not just the family. It used to be a community where we loved each other. I mean, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter what name you answer. Whatever happens to you, if it's painful, it happens to me too. But then, you see an accident scene for crying out loud. And in most cases, what Nigerians would do, instead of uh, taking uh, victims to hospital, they start looting the scene of crime. I mean, the scene of the accident. They start taking goods away from the vehicles. I mean, it is unfortunate. And, you know, at times we, we blame political leadership for our fate in this country. But then we should first blame ourselves before we go too far. Because what we have in the corridor of power today is simply a reflection of the quality of lives that we live at the basic institution called the family. There was an accident scene. I, I mean, an upwardly mobile Nigerian citizen should first think about safeguarding life. I think we have a call now. This is Colonel Ade Tunji Ajayi from Lagos. Hello, Colonel. Good morning, please go ahead with the contribution. You are speaking with uh, Colonel Gabriel Adetuji Ajayi, retired? Go ahead, sir. We're with you. Yeah, you called me. What do you want to say? We want to have your opinion about what transpired yesterday as we got um, some soldiers yeah. going wild in Lagos. I'll be buying 
happened towards my colleague. However, I believe what happened is a product of typical Nigerian incidents. You know, typical Nigerian incidents, the doctors go on strike without caring for the lives of other people. So it is not a sectoral problem, it is our own problem because we always resort to self help, because we have lost confidence in the, in the justice system. You know, if people know that, oh, if somebody commits a crime, he will be arrested, he will be tried. What those who could have done would be just to arrest the driver and hand over the driver to the police. But you find that everybody has lost confidence in the justice system. So people take the out into their hands. Don't go justice. So what will happen is that maybe some group of soldiers get irritated and uh, carry out something. And of course, every body is joining them to bend the anger because everybody is on edge. You know, we should not pretend about that everybody is on edge. So a little spark somewhere will cause a much problem. So this is our problem. The nation must address this problem as a nation, not a problem of the soldiers. It is not only the soldiers that will resort to self-help. It has become a custom, a tradition, because of our the failure of the justice system for people that are agreeing to take loss into their hands. So don't think about the so soldiers are also Nigerians. With Nigerian nuances, with Nigerian characteristics, with Nigerian beliefs, with Nigerian thoughts, with Nigerian reasoning. So the the soldier does not give them different reasoning. You know, Hello, Connell. This is our problem. We must Hello, solve Connell. this problem. You will see the DLT driver, the way they drive, as if as if they own God. You know, they, maybe they close their eyes when they are driving. Not only be able to go to the bathroom, as well as we see how drivers drive vehicles. So look at the scene. See how people drive anyhow. Thank you very much, Cornell, for your time. It's good hearing from you. Well, you heard him that um, this is a ultimate, this is one problem that has come upon us over time. He made mention of um, losing confidence in justice and, you know, the fact that, um, but what was running in my mind while he was making his contribution is what it portends for our security in Nigeria when we have law enforcement agents taking laws into their hands. I think, if I may, it's just obvious that um, uh, our law enforcement agents um, are beginning to see themselves like being above the law. And um, because they, they, are, they actually, they are like, um, you could say they are the executioners of this law. You know, when the judiciary, you know, give verdicts, they execute these things, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, taking laws in your own hands, just like uh, he said, uh, that um, sometimes it could be that um, some people have lost faith 
in in in, in the rule of uh, injustice mm -hmm. because sometimes um, if you if some of these guys are if, if the BRT guys are uh, guy are waited and then he, you know was being prosecuted um, maybe just maybe they might just they would have just been a government influence and then the the the, the military guys will, will cry foul that mm -hmm. they've not gotten what they want but sometimes justice does not really mean that the, uh, this other person must die mm -hmm. or another life must go for the other mm -hmm. now justice could be a prison term and for some people, they are not always cool with that. And it's a very, very big problem. Uh, I think everything has to go back to the judiciary, mm. the, uh, and every aspect, everybody that, 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 that constitutes you know, the panel that, that makes and enforces Just law. a minute. We have another caller from Ibado. Hello, Hello Abayomi. Hello. Good morning, and welcome to Core Digest. Hello. Hello, Hello. are you there? Actually, what happened? Hello? Go ahead, please. Go ahead with the contribution. Hello? Uh, actually, what happened? I thought uh, I'm Mr. Abayami from Ibado. Uh, actually, what happened was that I felt uh, this soldier Taking the laws into the hands and it's too much. They, they, they put it beyond control. Well, we'll advise our callers to please turn down the volume of your TV set when you're planning, um, when you're trying to call us so that we can do without the feedback distortion. There's a little delay between what you see on the phone and what you hear on TV. So I think that was what was going on with Abayo. Yeah. He was talking, I was also listening to, listening himself, to himself on TV. On, yeah. on TV. Now, we're talking about... Let's talk about the relationship between civilians and Nigerian army. In Nigeria, unfortunately, just like you established earlier, it's been more of a situation of fear than respect. I mean, possibly we have to also go back to the primary constitutional responsibilities of this law enforcement agents. You know, I was trying to go through it, and the Nigerian army simply has the responsibility of protecting the sovereignty, integrity of the country. And that's why oftentimes if you go to more developed climes, you just don't see the army on the street on a regular day. I mean, I watch TV and I see what Americans say about the American soldier praying Hello. for them. We have a caller from Benin, Osadolo. How are you today? Hello, Osadolo. Hello? Yeah, good morning. Morning, how are you today? Yeah, good morning. I'm hearing you. Good morning. Please Good go morning. ahead with your contribution. Yeah, I'm very fine. Thank you to you. Well, to my own uh, contribution, uh, just like the caller has uh, said, uh, you discover that this whole issue of uh, the so-called army who we supposed to see and respect taking the laws into their own hand, I begin to wonder what these people are taking this country to be. Because I believe if this thing happened to a civilian like you, myself, and all the people out there, I don't think that will go so brutal like this. But I believe the reason why Ambi have this opportunity to display this style they do is just because they are close to the weapons. They are close to the to the so-called uh, uh, that we use to fight people. Because I believe, because like you rightly said, that when we say army, we are afraid. I want to tell you that we are not afraid. We only give them the respect because of the uniform. So that is one thing I, I want you to understand. We give them the respect because of their uniform. If that uniform is out from them, then there is no respect for them. So please, we want to make this clear. Because what happened in Lagos, in any way. Even in Bini, yeah, recently, I believe it's recently just said uh, something within the week. Some men just came from nowhere and bundled into the House of Assembly. So imagine this, beating up people and all sorts of that. Then when you say that the civilians out there hold a hostage for them, you begin to wonder what is going on. Is our army or police made to fight with us, to beat us? To molest us or they are there to protect our interests. So one that man the colleague said, even my colleague now, I'm not sure that my colleague I'm even safe. So it's good.
people that tell you the truth. The truth, I must continue to preach. I'm a good civilian, a good citizen of this country. I will not be a support to anybody, be army, be police, be anybody at all. So please, we only pray that God will survive and God will help with all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Osada Law. My regards to the good people of Benin, the Asian city, what I call it, the city of modern civilization. You know, he said that what we respect possibly is the uniform and the arms. You take that away from the army man and then <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> there's no respect yeah, at all. Somehow, I, I, think, I think most Nigerians, especially may just want to agree with what he has said. Mm. Because um, just, just like uh, people say police, police, police uh, they'll come on TV and say police are your friends, they are, you know, you could just... But sometimes, when, when you look at some of the actions portrayed by some of these policemen, especially when you're at, uh, at the station, you know that um, you, you, you start to redefine if they're really your friends. And for, for the soldiers, especially the younger ones, uh, it's really surprising sometimes the things they do some, some of them don't even come up with uniform they wear camouflage you see them put on shorts and uh, have another like call a there. Hello, hello Latif hello good morning Latif yeah good morning how are you today I'm fine please go ahead with your contribution uh, my contribution to what really happened yesterday was a team from our Nigerian army these are the people who majority of the Nigeria has said to obey the local people of law. The land that Okada has already been banned in Lagos, especially in the highway. Total female will take Okada and to, and this Okada will be freed from him in order to enforce the law. Now an army is riding down Okada and nobody is asking questions. At times, the mountain militaries were in the military schools where you see the head cap and the arresting those and their tanks. So I don't know whether that, that law is no more in effect on that my twelve road. Now, the accident happened and the man died. Firstly, the mistake can either come from the Okada right, uh, the army or the DLC driver. And, okay, it has happened like that. There is a way to go about it. It is very good government for the man that has, because if it's, if it's an ordinary civilian, there is a way you can get out of the Now, the army went on rampage. Despite the security lapses in Nigeria, this so-called army, they went out, disturbing the whole citizen in the name of one army that was that, and I was killed in the name of accident. And accident can happen anywhere, even in your bedroom. Now it has happened yesterday. The Gaussians are, 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 are finding the people to get to their work. The Gaussians stocks are in the name of one person that was killed by accident, not deliberately, because it has not been confirmed whether it's deliberately or not. So, okay, it, it has happened like that. Don't they have the commandant who this? Uh, uh, this issue should be signed to and take the right time. Eh? So it really shows that they are, in, they are, they, 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 they are even their books are not even command them on what they are doing. If they have a grievance to the fashion land, let them come out and tell the own negotiations that they have a grievance against fashion land. Because I think what they did yesterday is just to, 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 to retaliate what fashion land did to one of their own, their, 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 their man. So you, I, 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 it's, a very, it's a big thing to Nigeria, and it's a big thing to Nigeria army that they can still go out and be doing all this. That are, that's why the fact that there is 100 percent last security in Nigeria. If they have anything, let them go to see up now and get our guests there. Don't they should not just because of an accident that happened. If if I'm if if, if, if it's an ordinary citizen, will they come outside and fight for you? That is what we're saying. It has happened, it has happened. There is a way the man that, not that they will destroy thousands of Nigeria. Many people couldn't find their way to their office yesterday just because of what happened, and which is not the case. So I think we should have shame to them. It is not a shame. And that is the theory that the, the, the security of Nigeria is only in the hands of God. No army can secure Nigeria. Let's try to find the idea. Boko Haram has been checking people they do not. Now don't be in Lagos. And these are the people we rely on. So technically, they are losing, they are losing confidence in them gradually. And if these things continue like this, I wonder what the God will come to in the next couple of years or in the next future. 
for our unborn generation. So thank you. I, I'm very happy for this program. You should enlighten our Nigerian family that the people are only respecting them because of that uniform. There is nothing in joining militants in Nigeria anymore. You can see that these are the things you get online every day. So you should not see what they are doing as a, as a great thing. They are there to secure us, not to, not to humiliate us, to intimidate us. People were frustrated yesterday. And people asking, is this how we continue in Nigeria? Is this how we continue in Nigeria? I don't know. Please let us know if that law has been banned. If, the, if, the, if that law has been banned, that people have the right to invite the father on highway now. Let everybody know. It will not be as if it's only military that have the upper hand inviting your father in Lagos. You see policemen driving your father in Lagos. Maybe I'm I'm not civil like me. I will be arrested. My father will be banned. So are these people superior than other people? These are the things the negotiation for the know now. But tomorrow morning, I can go out and get my own daughter to I start riding me to my office. Not that I will say, uh, don't ride the daughter. And I will say, I'm an army man, riding the daughter. Don't send the girl to me. It's all relative. Thank you very much for your contribution. Good to hear from you, brother. Uh, uh, well, it's a show this Saturday. We'd love to hear from you, and um, that's why we're opening the phone lines for you. He made reference. Of course, uh, 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 we also can feel the pain of the Nigerian army. I mean, the soldiers yesterday, that man that was knocked down was actually was on his way preparing for his child's naming ceremony. And, you know, everyone has a human anger to the story. But you hear Latif referring to one time when Gabba Fashola stopped him, an army boss, you know, driving on the BRT lane. If you can recall that story, you know, and then, of course, you hear about machinity amongst the, the uh, rank and file in Borno, where some soldiers shot at the GOC. There seem to be some cases like that that pops up everyone's, you know, in time. And it questions how subject to authority our military men are. Now, earlier, I was talking about the constitutional rule of the Nigerian army and the police. I mean, we have to be able to separate them. We seem to have the soldiers taking charge of the police responsibility. For crying out loud, internal security should be the primary responsibility of the Nigerian oh, police. Yes. But then we have a situation whereby the soldiers take over the road, not necessarily in the case of a security challenge that, you know, a security issue that challenges the sovereignty of this nation. These are issues that can be clearly handed by the police so why flood the streets with soldiers uh, as a matter of fact that that, that goes to um, uh, that, that brings a, a lot of questions like what kind of orientation does the soldiers or does the army guys have i think we have just a minute yes we have another call mamad hello mamad it's late for them to come out and tell out the real intent of army in the country. Okay. And as you know, we are in a country where military during the military era they have been doing that thing as if they are the military. You understood that. Now we are in democracy. Let's take an example of the election uh, that happened in other states now. Military that we are supposed to be in the barrack protecting the nation and territorial integrity were being used. What is what now you doing to them? You are here from the federal government that we have to call them to order, give them their guidelines, give them power to intervene in whatever the country is doing. That means you still believe they are more than you, or they think they are not answering to you. Because I don't look at the maybe the place where they will need them for. They should go to you know, go into the, uh, uh, what is the forest lane, go in there and do their, their job. Not on this. But by the time the central government has no time to give them what guy is, they are uh, within their line of duty. Uh, so they can do on this. Really cool them. Tell them this is where coming out of Barak without an uh, official uh, history, you should know. That is how we understand all that uh, countries, uh, uh, militaries are doing to operate. So please, I didn't blame any soldier one. If, you, if I'm your son, you give me big car. Even if I'm under age, since I'm here, I'm protected. Even if I knock someone down, I will, 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 I will,
Because I will not be arrested. My dad is there or whatever. So since the federal government or the central government cannot tell them when and when not to do something. Okay, look at I'm not in Lagos. I'm in Lagos. I've been to Lagos for like 20 years ago. And look at what the, the man said. That motorcycle was bound. Yeah, do they have a senior citizen? Or do they social guarantee you to do or what laws have said they should not do? So it's obvious, I didn't blame Lady Vashala, but I cast the old blame on the federal government. Please, you should call them to order. I should not be scared. Eh? He's the number one person. He did everybody command. And we're subjected to obey. So please, let the federal government yeah, well, look at uh, what they call the uh, Luke Olaje or whatever. That say you have arrested three or how many jobs. Is that go? Trace them to that forest. Go and bring those children out. That is their duty. If we have war, go and defend us. Not driving on the... In local that four days ago, I'll tell you. There's a young soldier with a huge knife within the uh, uh, medaga. In his uh, 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 lamp. Someone just mistakenly talks a soldier should go to the military. You know what it is? He just started to see this boy as if the boy was the boy was the boy around the house. Was the boy. Everybody was shocked and nobody can go to him and say, ah, what is happening? Everybody is upset. Just a soldier. Because he believes he didn't have every power from the federal government to do it. So please, they should cut the old blame on the federal and central government. That is my contribution. Thank you very much, Mahmoud, for joining us on Cold Digest this Saturday. There seems to be a lot of talk about the ban on motorcycles. Absolutely. And uh, it reminds me sometime last year, um, the Lagos State government came out clearly to um, restrict motorcycles from um, the highways. And um, motorcycles can now in Lagos run just within streets from a junction to a street, not on highway. And um, if, I may, if, I remember, if I can remember vividly, that highway, that um, uh, Monikban Axis, Ikorodu Road, is one of the roads that has restrictions, that has an embargo oh. on motorcycles. So that, that's another question. Talking we have about. another caller. Okay. Browser. Yeah, this is Rotimi. Okay. Hello, Rotimi. Hello, good morning. Morning, Rotimi. How are you today? Hello. Hello? Hello, hello. Rotimi from Lagos. Welcome, Rotimi. Go ahead with your contribution. Yes. You see, you see the, the, the same called um, BRC people have been encountered with them for a while. So, and when, when they acted, we had to say the whole Lagos belongs to them. I was driving one day on my own lane, and a BRC driver drove to me and hit me from the side. I blocked him for like 45 minutes, and this is last month people who were inside, and they were telling me that I was wrong. I said, okay, fine. I'm going to fight this to the end. So you cannot just come and eat me from the back. And you're telling me that I was at fault. And you're and sure you were not on the B out lane? He said he was going to eat me more. He was even checking and for that they But when the IRS people, they have to call their people, about five of them came down and said, they're just begging me, the police me that just leave these useless people. They are drunkards, they are this, they are this. Just leave them, please, or guys, just go on your own. The government is not too much. Just go. People were begging. People came down for the boss and said, it's not that please. We are so sorry. And that is not just the first time they were doing it. If they, if they can do it to a military man, what about the civilian? If they, that person is not a military person that can carry guns, when, when you see them market from, they, oh, that should be the second or third time they killed a military man. Apart from the middle, they just the military man, they killed, they killed so many police. You see them driving, go to jail, and you see them driving rubbish. They will, when they want to leave their lane to 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 to. to, to uh, you just put your head on it so that they, you, you get afraid or you, they eat you. And they start saying so many things. It's done so many things in this regard. And that is why you say, if they did not train them very well, what they said yesterday will stay continue. Because if it's a, if it's a civilian, nothing's going to happen. They are just uh, they become official. And that's the fact for them. Thank you very much.
Good to hear from you, wrote to me. He seems to be talking about the attitude of BRT drivers. I mean, sounds like the first time I'm hearing that. He even said it's not the first time they'll be killing a military man. As, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, you know, sometimes um, the way these um, BRT drivers, uh, you know, drive on the highway it has uh, to be questioned. You know, it, it's very cool when you work with the government, especially state government, and you know whatever happens, the state government uh, it will always be there to defend you. Mm. It, it, um, it, it gives them so much confidence. I, I think um, in some occasions I've been opportunity to join BRT buses, sometimes we they drive sometimes scares me, mm. and sometimes when you enter the, the buses, no, no doubt about that, it's very good, safe traffic and all of that, but then I, I think it's the, the driver as well has to be cautioned. Possibly the state government has a lot more work to do in reorientating, you know, the drivers. Now, I, I, I don't even think, as far as this, this matter is concerned, I don't think it just has to do with the driver. Mm. I, I think the military people as well have to, um, you know, talk to their people because if there's an embargo on the highway, you know, if you want to look at it, follow the rule of law, you want to say, okay, I, I, by the time it gets to the courts, uh, maybe the, the, the BRT guys might just go away with it mm. because uh, uh, w w w was it right to have you know, driven on that road at that point? Let's put emotions apart. Mm. That's one question. And also, we also examine the attitude of the BRT driver. You know, you know could he have averted it? Could you have controlled it? The last time I checked, the BRT lane was meant for those buses. Mm. But uh, would you say that Lagosians are still abiding by that law? Yes, uh, for some commercial buses. Uh, but um, for uh, especially some of these, um, um, uh, what do they call them, these military buses, sometimes, mm. you know, to beat traffic, they follow it. But you won't see the violation of um, the rule. Mm. But then there are military guys that can always go away with some of those things. I, I think um, that and much more we'll be looking at to take a break right now for the news on the air. When we come back from the new, for the news, we'll be looking at the attitude of military um, personnel generally as concerned obeying the rule of law as well of um, the attitude of some of these bus drivers. And as well as taking more calls from the people. As well as taking more calls from the people. So okay. stay glued to your phone. We'll be back after this time of stimulus. You can now watch Call TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.calltvnews.com Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Call TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV, leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station.